All right, we're on docs.cloud.oracle.com. The objective is to read about the uh, using Oracle Data Guard. Let's dive in. It says this procedure is only applicable to bare metal and virtual machine database systems. To use Oracle Data Guard with Exadata, see using Oracle Data Guard with Exadata DB systems. So maybe we'll do that later. But we already have our first question. So the question is, what is this procedure applicable to? And as we're reading, we just want to remember it's bare metal and VMDB systems. So here they're going to explain how to use the console to manage Oracle Data Guard associations in your database system to configure an Oracle Data Guard system across regions or between on-premises and Oracle Cloud infrastructure database systems. You must access the data database host directly and use the DGMGRL utility. So how do you access the database host? And the answer is use the, I think this stands for data guard manager guard, just kidding that second G probably isn't guard and uh, R, I don't know, L. I am always hunting down what acronyms mean, so let's be on the lookout for what that could mean in the docs here. Maybe I should have started reading this data guard concepts in administration before this video, but required IAM service policy to use Oracle cloud infrastructure, you must be given the required type of access in a policy written by an administrator, whether you're using the console or the rest API with an SDK, CLI or other tool. If you try to perform an action and get a message that you don't have permission or are unauthorized, confirm with your administrator the type of access. Okay, we've already read things like this before. But I've never seen this word compartment before. And it's cool because there is this little I for information, I assume, icon. So it says a collection of related resources that can be accessed only by certain groups that have been given permission by an administrator. And okay. So to turn that into a question, what is a compartment in Oracle DB infrastructure language? Horribly misspelled though, or I should say mistyped. The answer is it's a collection of related resources you can control access to. I wish I had the spell checker turned on on Spacefax here. So what a cool feature Oracle Docs has, that little icon. Um, they say if you uh, need help with understanding policies, you can go to these two links, but Prerequisites. An Oracle Data Guard implementation requires two database systems, one containing the primary database and one containing the standby. When you enable Oracle Data Guard for a virtual machine database system database, a new DB system with the standby database is created and associated with the primary. For a bare metal DB system, the DB system with the database that you want to use as the standby must already exist before you enable Oracle Data Guard. So let's break this paragraph down. I think to do that, the best question would be to ask, what's the difference between bare metal and VM databases when using Oracle Data Guard, ODG? So here for the virtual machine, we'll have a standby database created and associated with the primary one. But for bare metal, the database that you want to use as the standby, this must already be created before you enable the Oracle Data Guard. So I wonder if with the VM, this is like automatically created. And I had to shuffle things around in my screen a bit to get the answer to show. But for VMs, a standby is created and associated with the primary, but bare metal must already have one. Really simple. So the tip they give over here is an Oracle Data Guard configuration on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure is limited to a one standby database for each primary database. Okay, good to know. Uh, more requirements, I guess. Um, both DB systems must be in the same compartment. The DB systems must be the same shape type. For example, if the shape of the primary database is a virtual machine, then the shape of the standby database can be any other virtual machine shape. So my question and answer here is what shape is, what is shape a reference to here? And to sort of clarify, because I've never come across this term shape before, I tried to provide some of the context from the document. So VMs, so if the standby is a VM, uh, the primary must be as well. I guess you're calling the, the concept of VMs versus bare metal shapes. The database versions and editions must be identical, so Data Guard does not support Oracle Database Standard Edition. Active Data Guard requires Enterprise Edition, extreme performance. 
Now the database version determines whether Active Data Guard is enabled. If you're using the BYOL, bring your own license licensing model. And if your license does not include Active Data Guard, then you must either use Oracle Database Enterprise Edition High Performance or set up Oracle Data Guard manually. So I didn't know about these different editions, high performance versus extreme performance. And to add to my question of what two type of enterprise editions can you name, I wanted to throw in this one, how does bring your own license work? And I just don't know. Maybe in a future video, I'll show you what I learned about that. So if your primary and standby databases are in different regions and you must peer the virtual cloud networks for each database. That's interesting and helpful question is what happens if your standby is in a different region than your primary my answer I think poorly worded but um, what they're saying here is you must peer the VCNs for each database VCNs being virtual cloud networks my problem with the wording is we're only talking about two databases if I was to try to clarify this a bit, I would say that for every database pairs you have out there, they each would need to be paired. So it, I'm already thinking this is really complex if you have several of these pairs. But if your virtual cloud network is not peered to the other virtual cloud network that your other database is in, then I assume you have a problem. And we could read all about that again in a future video right here, remote VCN peering. I really want to get into that one. So our last requirement here is configure the security list ingress and egress rules for the subnets of both DB systems in the Oracle Data Guard Association to enable TCP traffic to move between the applicable ports. So to make sure I understood this part of the paragraph, I ask, what must the ingress egress rules accept? The answer is TCP traffic between the applicable ports. Makes me wonder about UDP. Are we allowed to use UDP? Maybe there's no reason to. Maybe that's a poor question. I won't even write it down. But the paragraph finishes by saying, ensure that the rules you create are stateful, which is by default, apparently. So for example, if the subnet of the primary database system uses the source cedar uh, 10.0.0/24, and the subnet of the standby uses the source uh, 10.0.1.0.24, then create rules as shown in the subsequent example. Before digging into the example, note the egress rules in the example show how to enable TCP traffic only for port 1521, which is a minimum requirement for our Oracle Data Guard to work. So if TCP traffic is already enabled on all of your outgoing ports, then you do not need to explicitly add these specific egress rules. I assume though that that means your security is a little weaker than it could be. Here's another maybe silly question. Do we have to use port 1521 or can we choose another one? Sometimes I don't know the difference between established protocols and just suggestions, or in this case, examples. So let's dive in. Stateless is set to no. Here's your example source. We're talking about inside of a private network here. IP protocol is set to TCP source port range, which is set to all. Uh, I've rarely seen these double colons before. Obviously, though, I'm a newbie, and that's why I make these videos. The destination port range isn't a range, it's just a single port here. And then allow TCP traffic for ports, uh, and there it is. You have a sixth item for your egress rules. This one right here is the new one. Other than that, we have stateless, stateless, um, IP protocol, IP protocol, destination port range, destination port range, and then allows, allows. This is our new one, source port range. So you always talk about your sources in both of them. You always talk about your destination port range. But maybe a hint that we're talking egress is seeing destination here, and a hint that we're talking about ing in ingress, sorry, is right there. Okay, I'm breaking that down too much, I think. Now for our standby database system, it almost looks exactly the same, but notice a source and source. So the primary is obviously on uh, this machine, the 10.0 and 0 and 0. That means our backup is actually this machine. 
So now we get to the section called Availability Domain and Fault Domain Considerations. Oracle recommends that the database system that contains the standby database be in a different availability domain. So question, where must the standby database be? Scratch that, we should say, where should the standby database be? They're just recommending it. So our answer leads us to another question. The icon here says that an availability domain is one or more isolated fault-tolerant Oracle data centers that host cloud resources such as instances, volumes, and subnets. A region contains one or more availability domains. Wow, that answers a question I had from above. But let's focus on one thing at a time. An availability domain is, um, let's just say, a place hosting instances, volumes, and subnets. Well, to be more specific, it's a place in an Oracle data center. They're really pushing that here, right? And yes, we know it's fault tolerant and, okay, it's isolated. So if we go up to previous questions, um, we have region right here. What happens if your standby is in a different region than your primary? And our answer here was we had to peer um, two VCNs, that is to say virtual cloud networks together. Here it says a region contains one or more availability domains. So I copied that answer verbatim. And just like maybe the word suggests, um, a region is big, a domain is a little smaller. Sure, you could have a region with only one domain, but for my answer, I just tacked on um, like the city versus state idea. You know what? It'd be better to compare it to city and neighborhoods. I mean, technically, you could have a super tiny city, super small uh, town, it would be called instead, um, with maybe just one neighborhood. I feel like I've driven through those before in my life. Or you could have a gigantic city with lots and lots of neighborhoods all over the place. I don't know if that analogy works. So we're talking domains from that of the do a database system containing the primary database to improve availability and disaster recovery. This could be a tricky question, but primary and standby uh, DBs should be where? Not in two different regions necessarily. Sounds like they can be, but uh, Oracle really suggests they be in two different domains. Why? To improve availability and disaster recovery. Now, if you enable Oracle Data Guard for a database and your standby database is in the same availability domain as the primary database, that is either by choice or because you're working in a single availability domain region, then Oracle recommends that you place standby databases in a different fault domain from that of the primary database. What's a fault domain? A logical grouping of hardware and infrastructures within availability domain to provide isolation of resources in case of hardware failure or unexpected software changes. So my answer to what a fault domain is, it's a smaller subsection of an availability domain. Um, it's kind of strange to me, but at least we could go back to my analogy of cities and neighborhoods. So now I'm trying to think about houses and maybe a fault domain would be like you keep um, each database in two separate houses. That makes sense in case one burns down or something. The note here says if your primary and standby databases are two node Oracle rack, RAC databases, and both are in the same availability domain, then only one of the two nodes of the standby database can be in a fault domain. That does not include any other nodes from either the primary or standby databases, or standby database. This is because each availability domain has only three fault domains, and the primary and standby database have a combined total of four nodes. So for more information, we can read regions and availability domains. I might do that later. So simple question and answer right there. How many fault domains are there in a availability domain? Now in terms of working with Oracle Data Guard, the Data Guard ensures high availability, data protection, and disaster recovery for enterprise data. The Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database Data Guard requires two databases, one in a primary role and one in a standby role. The two databases make an Oracle Data Guard association, and most of your applications access the primary databases. While the standby database is transactionally consistent, is a transactionally consistent copy of the primary. Oracle Data Guard maintains a standby database for by transmitting and applying redo data from the primary database 
If the primary database becomes unavailable, then you can use Oracle Data Guard to switch or fail over the fail over the standby database. I think they meant to write to fail over to the standby database to the primary role. Question, how is the standby database maintained with data guard sending redo data from uh, the primary? I, I, I wanna ask what is redo data, but I feel like it's kind of obvious. So I hope my assumption isn't wrong. So what that paragraph is saying is in a failover, the standby will switch or become the primary. I then wonder if the primary becomes the backup, like what's going on with that? The tip here is the standby databases in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure database are physical standbys. Okay. A switchover reverses the primary and standby database roles. Each database continues to participate in the Oracle Data Guard Association in its new rule role. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. A switchover ensures no data loss. Performing plan maintenance on a database system with Oracle Data Guard Association is typically done by switching the primary database to the standby role. Well, that's how they do maintenance. So I hope this answer is correct, but how is maintenance performed? Simply by switching from standby, or switching the title of one to the title of the other. A failover transitions the standby database into the primary role after the existing primary database fails or becomes unreachable. A failover might result in some data loss when you use maximum performance protection mode. Okay, so at first that didn't make sense at all, but if I'm reading maximum performance, so you value performance over exactness, maybe. Um, so you're trying to go fast, not always 100% accurate. In the case of a failover, uh, it, yeah, it makes sense that some data will be lost because of that. All right, for reinstate, reinstate a database into the standby role in an Oracle Data Guard Association. All right, so that sentence was just what the concept of reinstating is. Uh, probably could have done without it. Well, um, you can use the reinstate command to return a failed database into service after correcting the cause of failure. So again, turned it into a question and answer over there. Uh, let's wrap up this video. Note, you cannot terminate a primary database that has an Oracle Data Guard association with a standby database until you first delete the standby database. Alternatively, you can switch over the primary database to the standby role and then terminate it. You cannot terminate a database system that includes databases that have Oracle Data Guard enabled. So to remove the database or to remove the Data Guard uh, for a bare metal one, you can terminate the standby database. But for a VM, you can terminate the standby database system. What? Isn't that the same thing? Is it saying for the entire VM you are terminating the entire system? I don't know, uh, terminating a DB system with data guard. If you want to terminate, you must terminate the standby before you terminate the primary. If you try to terminate a primary DB system that has a standby, the terminate operation will not complete. Use the console to enable an Oracle Data Guard association between databases and change the role of a database in an Oracle Data Guard association using either a switchover or a failover operation and reinstate a failed database. And then they're just kind of being redundant here, I guess. And we can click each of these to get very specific directions on how to do these things. And just looking at this, I would much rather see a video. So I'm sure you can uh, YouTube that. For APIs though, we have uh, lots more information. You can use these API operations to manage uh, data guard associations. So create data guard, uh, get data guard, list, switch over, fail over, reinstate. All right, so that sounds good for a video. Thanks for watching, I hope this helps someone.